Hi, I'm Akhilesh Kumar Shavastu, and in today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the evaluation of a postfix expression in the programming of the stacks series. We will first learn how to uh, evaluate the given postfix expression. We will write the algorithm and then we'll code that in the C language. So let's look at the example and understand the process. So let's say we have the expression of a kind three plus four. This expression is a infix expression. Why we are saying that this is the infix expression? That is, these are the operands three and four, and this is the operator. And when the operator is appearing in between the operands, we'll say that this is the infix expression. The same expression can be written like this: three four plus. This is the postfix expression, wherein the plus operator is appearing after both the operands. And if I write the expression, the same expression like this. Wherein the operator is appearing before the operand, we'll say that this is a prefix expression. Now, this prefix expression is also known as the Polish notation expression, and the postfix expression is also known as the reverse Polish notation expression. So, the prefix and the postfix of the Polish or the reverse Polish notation expressions are very popular in the uh, compilers because if I have to evaluate the expression of kind, let's say three plus four multiplied with five. And then raised to the power six multiplied with three divided by eight minus six. So if this is a big expression, and wherein we have to perform various operations, then we will first have to scan from left to right, and do find. Uh, we will have to find out which operator is having the highest priority. So from one left to right scan, we will say that the highest priority is of this exponent, and we will perform this uh, operation as a uh, as a first. And after performing this expression, we will once again go from left to right and find out which of the which is the next highest priority operator, and then you will evaluate that. So for solving this expression, you will have to uh, do multiple left to right or right to left scanning, and then only you will be able to solve this expression. So this is a very tedious job to uh, overcome for the 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 difficulty in uh, evaluation of the infix expression. We first convert the infix expression to the postfix. Which actually makes the evaluation process very easy. For example, if I have to evaluate the expression of kind three, four multiplication and seven plus, so this expression is the postfix expression wherein three, four and seven are the operands, and this multiplication and plus are the operators. To evaluate this kind of the expression, we will scan this expression one by one, and whenever we see the operand, for example, three is the operand, you will push this on the stack, and when you see the next operand, you also push that on the stack. And when you see the operator, multiplication is the operator. Then you pop the stack. So once you pop the stack, the element is taken in, let's say, from variable b. And you once again pop because the operation can be performed only on the two operands. So you are popping this, the, popping the stack twice. So the next popped element is taken in a. Then you perform the operation a multiplied with b. It means you are performing the operation three multiplied with four. The answer is twelve, and you will push this on the stack again. So uh, after popping these two elements, the stack becomes empty. So you push this answer on the stack. Then you see the next character, which is the seven, or next uh, operand, which is seven. So since this is the operand, you push it on the stack, and then you have the next character or the next uh, operator symbol on the uh, postfix expression. So we have plus. You will pop this stack twice. The first popped item is taken in B, and the second popped element is taken in A. And you perform the operation a plus b. So you are performing the operation twelve plus seven. The answer is nineteen, and this answer will be pushed on the stack. And you can see that the expression has finished. There is no, there are no more symbols in the stack now. So you can pop the stack and return that. This is the answer. So if I summarize that what I have, what I have done, that uh, we start with the uh, empty stack, and uh, you are given an expression, the postfix expression, and you are scanning every symbol of the postfix expression one at a time. And when you are observing the operand, you are pushing that on the stack. So you are going to perform the push operation. And then, if you observe the operator, then you are going to pop the stack twice. So first popped element is taken in some let's say B variable. And the next popped element is taken as the a variable, and then you perform the operation a operator b. Whatever is the answer, that answer is again pushed back on the stack. 
So this is the process of the post-fix evaluation. Let's write this uh, more clearly in the form of the algorithm. Let's say we're going to perform the operation post-fix evaluation. And in this post-fix evaluation, a post-fix expression is given to us. We're considering that this is the kind of the string. And then I'm taking a stack, let's say a stack as a statement. This will be the operand stack, which will be uh, storing the integer value. I will have to initialize this stack such that it does not contain any element at the beginning. And then I will have to scan this expression and find out each of the character and identify its nature. So while postfix i is not equal to null character, I'll keep popping the element. Since I am working with a string, let's take, let's take the iterator i, which will be initialized to zero. And we start from the zero character and then we go for the next characters. So this is just an up iterator for the string given. So I'm going to take the symbol from this postfix expression or the ith character from this postfix expression has been taken in the symbol. Now let's analyze this if this is the operand or the operator. So if symbol is operand, then a very simple operation is going to be carried out that we will push this symbol on the stack. So on the S stack, we're going to push this symbol. But if you don't have the operand, then you will pop this stack twice. So first pop element is taken in from B variable, let's say. And the second pop element is taken in from A variable, let's say. And then you apply the operator. So apply operator on A and B. So you are applying the operator on A and B, not B on A, but on <clears throat> A and B. First popped element is taken in B and the second popped element is taken in A and you're applying the operator on A and B, just in the reverse order where you, uh, in which you have popped the element. After finding out uh, the answer, let's say the answer is, well, <clears throat> after applying the symbol on A and B, you have got an answer and you will have to push this answer on the stack. And so you'll keep doing this uh, by the time you have the expression, by the time you have the symbols in the postfix expression. So after taking each of uh, every symbol from this uh, postfix expression, you will have to increment i as well, such that you go for the next character. Now, once once you have once you are finished with the uh, characters or once you are finished with the symbols, you will pop the stack and you will return the answer. So you will return the popped item from the stack at the last when you don't have any character as an input. So this is the post fixed evaluation. So let's code this and uh, there will be some very basic logics involved in identification of if the given symbol is operand, operand of the operator. Now I have uh, this code already written, which is the uh, which is performing the or which is which has been written for the basic uh, push pop operations on the stack. I hope uh, you must have seen my previous videos wherein we have discussed about the primitive operation for the stack. So I just I'm just explaining these uh, once again. I've declared the stack, and the stack is uh, containing the integer element. So I will have to change this integer element, and uh, there is a top index. The initialization function initializes the stack to minus one index. If I initialize it from the zero index, it means that we have one element. So we have initialized this to the invalid index minus one. So this is the is empty function that returns uh, true or false depending on if my stack is empty or not. So it is just checking the condition. If the stack the stack top is minus one, then it returns true. Otherwise, it returns false. Then the push operation, wherein uh, integer item will be passed, and you have you will have to insert that item at the top index. So before inverting, you will have to increment the top index, and that at the in incremented top index, you will have to invert the item x. Similarly, in the pop function, you will first have to check the underflow condition because the pop can be performed only if uh, there are the elements in the stack. If the stack is empty, you cannot perform the pop operation. So if uh, the stack uh, 
is not empty, then you take uh, the top element from the stack in some X variable, and then you decrement the top index and return X. <clears throat> Another function is there, the stack top function, which just returns the top index element. It does not uh, remove the element, but it just returns the top element. So these are the basic function of the primitive operations. Now I will have to write the code for prefix, uh, postfix evaluation. So for postfix evaluation, let's say I'm writing a function, postfix evaluation, wherein we have been given the uh, postfix expression. And this will be the this will be a string. I don't know how many characters will be there, so I'm just taking this as a pointer. Let's take the iterator i, which is m0. I will have to initialize this tag. So I'm calling the initialization function that initializes the tag. And then by the time I have the elements in the postfix expression, so while postfix i is not equal to null character. I will take the operator or uh, I will take the symbol in the some uh, some variable named symbol. So the character at the ith index in the postfix is taken as a symbol. Now I will have to identify if this is the operand or the operator. So this will be the operand if uh, the if, if the symbol contains the numerals. So what there are some assumptions where by which we are working. We are assuming that we have the single digit operands only. So the operands can be 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth up to 9. But to these operands are the character values. We will have to convert these character values to the integer values. You must be knowing that uh, the C work, C language works with the uh, ASCII values. So 0 will have the ASCII value 48, and 1 will be having the ASCII. 49 and 2 will be having ASCII 50 and so on and so forth. Nine will have the ASCII value 57. So if I have to find out the numerical value, I will have to subtract the ASCII value of zero from the character value that we are obtaining. So if I subtract 48 from 48, I'll obtain a zero. And if I subtract 48 from 49, I'll get 1. If I subtract 48 from 50, I'll get 2. So whatever character value we are obtaining, we will have to subtract the ASCII value of 0 from there. So if you remember the ASCII value of 0, then subtract 48. Otherwise, you can simply subtract a 0 character from there. I'm writing this. You can check it out. If the symbol is having ASCII value greater than or equal to 0, and symbol is having ASCII value less than or equal to 9. In that case, we'll say that uh, our uh, our symbol is the operand, operand, and I will have to push this symbol on the stack. So for pushing the symbol on the stack, uh, let's subtract the ASCII value of 0 from the character, and you will get the numerical value. So the numerical value is pushed on the stack. Now, if the symbol is not operand, we are assuming that that will certainly be the operator. It is our assumption that the expression is correct and it contains only the operand and the operators. So uh, if this is the oper operator, then we will have to pop two elements from the stack. Let's say I'm calling a pop function and the pop function deletes an element and the deleted element is taken in some, let's say A, B, and the next deleted element is taken in A. As we discussed in the algorithm also, the order of uh, the deletion uh, means we are performing two deletions of two pop operations. And the first pop value is taken in B, and the second pop value is taken on in A. Now I will have to evaluate, or we will have to apply the operator on A and B. So let's say I have a evaluate function, and in this eval, if in this eval, evaluate function, I'm passing three parameters: A, B, the operands, and the symbol, which is the operator. So according to the symbol, this will evaluate the expression and Let's say the evaluated value is taken in a variable named value. Then we will have to push 
this item in the stack or we will have to push the answer value in the stack. So by the time I have the symbols in the postfix expression, I'll keep finding the element, identifying the element if that is operand, we'll keep on pushing that. If I have the operand, then I will be popping two values and we'll apply these operator on those two values. The answer which has been obtained will be pushed on the stack. Now, uh, the final value of the expression will be, if, if you don't have any character to push or any character to pop, then it means the expression is finished. So you will pop the stack and this is our answer. So you can just write here that evaluated. Value of the expression is we'll just pop the stack and print this answer. So this is a very simple uh, function. We will have to write the evaluate function also. So let's write the evaluate function. This evaluate function will have three parameters passed here. One is the integer A, another one is integer P. These are the two operands. And we will have a operator also. This is this will be character. So let's say operator is OP. So based on the nature of the operand, uh, operator, we'll be performing the operation here. So we are taking OP in the switch and we'll apply the different cases. For example, if I have plus here, I'll be computing A plus B. And this is the answer so we can return this A plus B. And then let's do it with all the possible operators that we have in the arithmetic. If I have minus, then I'll be returning A minus B. If I have a multiplication, I'll be returning a multiplied with B. And if I have a division sign as an operator, we can just do the division. And if I have the modulus, then we can perform the A modulus. Let's assume that we are having only these operators here. So this function evaluate is returning the integer type of the value. So I have uh, kept its return type as integer. So let's look at the postfix evaluation algorithm as well. And then we will have uh, to declare some of the symbols, some of the, uh, some of the variables A, B, and value. These are of integer type. And we're taking a symbol also. So symbol will be of character type. In the main, we'll have to take the expression. Let's say this expression. Let's initialize the expression by ourselves. Let's say it is three, four, plus five multiplication. So this is like uh, performing uh, three plus four and the answer is multiplied with five. So the answer should be 35 in this case. Let's call the function postfix evaluation and pass this expression. Let's run this algorithm. Let's run this code and let's see if this is having any error. Okay. So at some place I have uh, used the push function and the p is in lower case. So we have checked and we have corrected this to uppercase. Post fix evaluation. I think uh, there is some spelling mistake in calling the function. So just match this. Okay. So the program is uh, error free. Just a, a small correction that I will have to apply the percentile D. Fine. Let's run this code and check for the uh, inputs.
Okay, so this is the code and you can see that the answer returned by this code is 35. So we just correct that we have performed three plus four, that is seven multiplied with five. Let's take a bigger expression. So along with the, uh, whatever operation has been performed, let's say it is performing three plus and four, five multiplication. And since we have one, two, three, four, five, six operands, so it will have the same number of the operators also. I don't know what the answer, but let's run this code and just find out what the answer is. So here, you can see that the answer is 18. So I hope the answer should be 18 only because the function is working properly. So I hope you have uh, understood the concept of the evaluation of the postfix expression in the form of the program, and you can code this very well. Uh, there are some changes that you can apply to this. There's a very small change that you can apply to this and uh, you can make your own function for that. Uh, let's say the uh, allowed number of the digits in the In, in, in the postfix expression is unlimited. Fine. And here we are saying that every two operand is separated by space. Okay. So if this is the this is the kind of the expression given, and you have to perform the postfix evaluation on that, I hope you can very easily convert uh, your written code like this, what, what I have done today, in this form. Another thing you can also do, let's uh, say that you have the program code like this, let's say A, integer A, integer B, integer C. And let's say we this A is equals to 25, B is equal to 791, and C is equals to 10. So these are the three, three operands which have been given, and you have the expression of kind A, B, multiplication, C plus. So in this expression, the A, B, and C are the variables. And this these A, B, C are the variables which have been initialized to these variables. So if the expression or the input is of this kind, then also you can perform this kind of the postfix evaluation, wherein the operands are given. You will first have to obtain the operand and its initialized value. You will have to identify these, and then you will have to apply these values on this postfix evaluation. So the postfix evaluation function will be saying what I have written, but yes, we will have to apply these changes. So these are the two changes that you can apply your your own function, you can and you can convert your program accordingly. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you must have understood the postfix evaluation.